Okay, so this week I had to buy some tortillas because we go through those a lot. My daughter eats a lot of those for lunch. And I wanted some fruit to take to work. Lettuce just goes good with lots of things. We were running low on brown sugar. And I got some granola, some pepperoni, some cheese for one of my meals, more Parmesan. We use that a lot. And also bagels some potatoes, more cream cheese, more cream, and more yogurt, and also some more chips, because we eat quite a bit of that kind of thing. Um, and this, plus I got another gallon of milk and a half a gallon of almond milk. So that was almost $100 there. If you have time and are able to pull your meat out a little bit before you cook it up and let it get to closer to room temperature and let it get salted really well, that will make for the best results. You can also, of course, dry rub this, but I didn't. And so I just put in some liquid smoke, some apple juice and water and let it cook for about 45 minutes on high. And I did this the night before. So this is, had been in the fridge, so I pulled it out and covered it with barbecue sauce the next night. And because it was cold, I put the tin foil on it and let it cook a little longer. Of course, if you're taking this straight from the Instant Pot to your oven, you probably don't need that step. But while that was warming up, I just threw some red potatoes in my Instant Pot with some butter and some seasonings, which I forgot to film. <laughs> and um, cooked those for a few minutes until soft. After about 10 minutes or so, I took off the tin foil and I rubbed the sauce around a little bit, made sure it kind of coated everywhere, and then stuck it back into a little bit browned up, a little more cooked. About this time, my potatoes were done. Uh, I did a quick release and they were soft, so I stirred them around a little bit and I added some frozen peas. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to vegetables. <laughs> I need to get better at that, but I just like to add them quickly, however I can. And this was the final result. Super tender, easy ribs that I could do fairly quickly since they were pre-cooked before, the night before. So a while ago, a friend had given me a whole chicken that they had butchered. And so I cut pieces apart and put them in different baggies. And I brought out the leg and thigh piece, piece and a couple of the wing pieces. Again I salted these like I did the ribs and then I put them in my cast iron and put my cast iron on top to help um, brown them. Once they were brown on both sides I added well I added a little um, poultry seasoning to one side and then once they were brown on both sides I put them in the oven. The night before when we had the ribs, we did not eat all the potatoes, so I thought I'll repurpose them and just bake them up with the chicken. It sure makes things easy when you have things like that you can throw in for a quick meal. Now, since the pieces were different sizes and I wanted them all to get to a 165 or 170 in the middle, I did have to cook the leg a little longer. If you've ever cut up a whole chicken before, there are parts left of it that you can use. And you'd be surprised how much meat you can get off of the chicken carcass. So I just added salt water to my Instant Pot and I had enough water to cover the chicken. And this I put on for 45 minutes on high pressure. I then stripped it of all the good edible stuff. And then I threw the bones back in and let it cook longer so it could be more like bone broth. So here is my pieces I got off of that carcass. I also had done this the night before, so it was in the refrigerator 
and cold. So I added the broth to my pan and I added these dried mushrooms because I wanted to use up things that I had in my pantry. I had some carrots left over, so I used those. I added some garlic powder. I added some thyme, that's what it was, was thyme and some pepper. And then I have a bunch of freeze dried veggies. So I had these zucchini and red peppers. Mix that all. And then I, after that simmered for a while, I added back my chicken. And I had some rice cooked from another meal. So I went ahead and added that. You could definitely do noodles if you'd rather have noodles or just keep it veggies and meat. But I wanted to use up the rice and I wanted a chicken and rice. Uh, I wanted to try a chicken and rice soup. The broth was pretty strong, so I did end up adding some water to water it down a little bit, and I topped it with these fried onions, and it turned out really tasty. I've had these two lone salmon fillets in my freezer for so long, and I just haven't thought of a good way to use them. So I added some smoke seasoning and some salt, and made sure that was coated well. And then in my Instant Pot, I added water and more salt and some pepper, some garlic that I had chopped and froze, onion powder, and some smoked paprika, as well as some butter. Then I stuck a pound of Panay pasta dried, made sure it was submerged in the water. And then I just put these salmon fillets on top. I then put it on high for five minutes, but I think it could have gone another minute. Then I pulled out my salmon so I could stir in some other things with my pasta to make my sauce. Now there was a little I should have drained a little bit of the liquid, but I didn't. But you could if there's a little extra liquid. Keep some, but not all. I added my cream. I think I did a cup total of cream, of heavy cream. And then I added Parmesan. Now my mistake was I added it all at once. You need to be sure to slowly add this and incorporate it in. And once you have your sauce kind of thickened up, you can add back your salmon. And then I had some sun-dried tomatoes I added and some capers. Maybe that's not something you have on hand, that's okay, but it's really good if you do. Again, like I said, the sauce was just a little thin, but I think if I would have drained some of the extra liquid, it would have been perfect. It was still very, very tasty. It, I was inspired to make this from a dish that we have at a local restaurant, one of my favorites, so here it is, pretty good.